Good Wednesday morning, and thanks for joining us. From the Ohio Agnet, voice you know with the News You Trust Studio, sponsored by Grain Equipment Company, where innovation meets execution. I'm Dusty Sonnenberg. Well, mostly cloudy skies, 33 degrees on the barn thermometer, looking for a high today around 55 degrees, a little warmer than yesterday, but it's definitely starting to feel like November. This quick calendar reminder, the Jackson County Regional Livestock Market will have a bread cow sale coming up this Friday, the 15th at 6 o'clock p.m. For details, visit JCR lm.com your livestock authority a quick note and a bit of sad news in the conservation world as bill richards age 93 passed away mr richards for younger folks was chief of the scs which then became the nrcs while he was chief under president george bush from 1989 to 1993 he along with jim mosley who was the deputy director at the usda at that same time came up with the equip program as well as csp no-till also grew rapidly during those four years and the emphasis was on soil quality. At the time, that meant leaving at least 30% residue cover after planting with the tillage, and uh, that was before even uh, cover crops and things were around. So our thoughts and prayers go out to the family of Bill Richards. Again, he passed away at the age of 93. Well, let's check in now with Matt Reese and a Christmas tree update. Today, I'm at the Ohio Department of Agriculture. I'm talking with Director Brian Baldridge, and we are processing trees for the Operation Evergreen program. Director, why is it fun to be a part of something like this. An amazing event, the great collaboration between Ohio Department of Agriculture and the Ohio Christmas Tree Association, and just preparing these trees to be shipped overseas with ornaments and Christmas cards uh, to our men and women serving uh, overseas during the Christmas season. And knowing that they're away from their families, uh, this is a little bit of that Christmas cheer that we're going to send them from Ohio uh, to enjoy the Christmas season, even though they're away from their families, but just uh, serving uh, us and protecting our great freedoms. And we've got uh, quite a crew of helpers here from the Christmas Tree Association and the Department of Agriculture. We also have some servicemen here, and that's kind of a new addition, and it make, makes it come kind of full circle. It's neat to see that, isn't it? It is, and as we look at agencies, I reached out to Director Harris, General Harris and Director Ashenhurst, and, and they're, you know, the veteran services and active duty military folks here in Ohio, National Guard, and reached out to them and said, hey, please come out, be part of this. Great event, uh, great collaboration, and just doing this uh, wonderful uh, opportunity that we get to uh, uh, pass a little Christmas cheer on to our men and women serving overseas. And one challenge with this program is the shipping costs. There are around $180, $200 per tree to ship them to uh, various places around the world. They're going to Jordan this year, I understand. Um, what do you want folks to know about uh, maybe supporting this program and uh, highlighting some of the good things that happen here? Yeah, I think we need to really lift up this program. We're having a lot of conversations, and we're asking for support and those donations. Uh, you can go on the Ohio Christmas Tree Association website, uh, focus it on Operation Evergreen, and, and give some donations. We're trying to, you know, the cost of shipping is not what it used to be, and we want to make sure that we can send all the Christmas cheer that we can overseas, uh, and because there is a cost to that. So we're looking for more support to grow this uh, back to what it used to be. It's a great event, big event now, but it, I think it can be even more. About 100 trees going overseas to troops through the Operation Evergreen here inspected at the Ohio Department of Agriculture. Thanks, Director, for your time. Thank you very much. Have a great day. And thanks, Matt. Let's take a look now at your Wednesday morning weather forecast brought to us by Seed Consultants. Simply better performance online at seedconsultants.com. Another sunny and a mild day today in Ohio. I'm Chief Meteorologist Ryan Martin with a look at the Ohio Ag Weather Update. We've got a frontal boundary coming together to our west here in the next 12 to 24 hours, but I don't think it has a full impact on Ohio until we get probably into the daytime hours tomorrow. Clouds will be increasing later on here, but I don't really think the moisture gets going here until we get into tomorrow. Once we move through tomorrow, we're going to be dealing with scattered showers and thunderstorms up to three quarters of an inch of moisture, coverage 100% of Ohio. Today, we're going to be seeing sun followed by late day clouds. For the period after the frontal passage, I think we dry down relatively easily. Clouds lingering off and on through Friday, but they don't create any additional precipitation. Just mixed clouds and sunshine. Fully sunny on Saturday. Mixed clouds and sun Sunday with maybe a spit or a sprinkle in southern parts of the state. It's not really associated with any kind of trough boundary. It's just leftover moisture that's trapped. And then we look for a dry start to next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, full sunshine as a massive system gets going to our west. Eventually, I think it gets here. And when it does, it brings rain, but also a big surge of colder air out of Canada. 
That's the way your forecast is stacking up. I'm meteorologist Ryan Martin. Thanks, Ryan. Stay tuned. We'll be back to take a look at your headlines after this. Hi, everyone. This is Dale Minio from the Ohio AgNet. For a quarter of a century, I powered my truck with biodiesel traveling the state promoting agriculture. Biodiesel is a reliable, high-performance fuel that works in any diesel engine without modification. The best part is that with every mile driven, I'm fueling the economy, doing good for the environment, and supporting soybean farmers. Learn how using biodiesel can add value to every bushel of soybeans grown at soyohio.org. Since 1926, Nationwide has been rooted in agriculture. Founded as the Farm Bureau Mutual Automobile Insurance Company with a mission to protect farmers and their communities, we honor our legacy by offering solutions that evolve with the complex needs of today's farms. As the leading insurer of America's farms and trusted by eight farm bureaus for 100 years and counting, Nationwide is on your side. Number one insurer based on 2023 direct written premium per AM best. Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company and Affiliates, Columbus, Ohio. Taking a look at your agricultural headlines, U.S. sales of agricultural tractors and combines fell in October of this year. The U.S. sales of ag tractors decreased 14.2% on October of 2024 compared to the year prior. That according to new data from the Association of Equipment Manufacturers. Sales of combines also fell during the month, dropping 34.6% compared to what they were in 2023. October sales of ag tractors Tractors and combines follow a September that also showed a slowdown in sales. That, according to AEM Senior Vice President Kurt Blades, and these declines point to the overall softness in the ag economy following a robust five years of positive industry results. Now, Canadian sales of ag tractors also dropped in October, finishing the month 15.1% behind 2023 sales, while combine sales fell 26.9% compared to the year prior. Now, breaking it down by the numbers in the U.S., two wheel drive farm tractors less than 40 horsepower were down 8.4 percent while those tractors between 40 and 100 horsepower were down 12.8 percent for the month and those tractors 100 horsepower or greater were down 37.8 percent four wheel drive tractors were only down a half percent and combined were down 34.6% total. Now, if we look year over year, those 40 horsepower or less tractors down 14.7% year over year, 40 to 100 horse tractors down 9.8% year over year, and 100 plus horsepower tractors down 15.3% year over year. Four wheel drive tractors found themselves up 1.3% if you take a look at October of this year versus October of last year, and self propelled combines were down. 23.1%. In other agricultural headlines, the USDA's National Ag Statistics Service finds that harvest is nearly completed in the Buckeye State. Warm, dry weather pushed corn for grain harvest closer to completion. That, according to Ben Torrance, state statistician for the USDA's National Ag Statistics Service Ohio field office, topsoil moisture conditions were rated 68% short to very short for the week ending November 10. The average temperature last week was 56 degrees, 11.5 degrees up above normal, and weather stations recorded an average of 0.77 inches of precip last week. That's 0.01 inches below average. There were 5.2 days suitable for field work during the week ending November 10th, and corn for grain harvest was on track to finish well ahead of the five-year average. Winter wheat emergence progress was at 86% complete, which was right in line with the five-year average pace, and winter wheat condition was rated 65% good to excellent. Other activities included fall tillage and fertilizer applications. Now taking a look at the national picture, corn harvest inch ahead four percentage points nationally last week, reaching 95% complete that as of Sunday. This was still nine points ahead of last year's 86% and 11 points ahead of the five-year average. Now soybean harvest moved ahead two percentage points to reach 96% complete as of Sunday, that two points ahead of last year at 94% and five points ahead of the five-year average, which had run at 91%. As far as winter wheat goes, planning progress for winter wheat and planning moved ahead by another four points, each 91% complete nationwide. One point, though, behind last year's 92%. 
two points behind the five-year average of 93%. As far as crop development goes, an estimated 76% of that winter wheat had emerged as of Sunday, three points behind where it was last year and the five-year average, which were both at 79%. This Ohio Crop Progress Report update is sponsored by AgriSpray Drones. Empowering rural America through complete spray drone solutions, contact us at agrispraydrones.com slash Arnold Precision. Well, questions about the Farm Bill making agricultural headlines. One of those is the Farm Bill or disaster rate on the table for agriculture to pass before the end of the year. Congress is expected to return to Washington today for a lame duck session with Republicans debating just how much they want to get done before President-elect Donald Trump's inauguration. The big issue for Congress will be passing another government spending bill. Congress has not hammered out a full budget for fiscal year 25, which began back in October, and the current budget deal expires on December 20th, the Washington Post reported yesterday that lawmakers are looking at passing another budget extension, the same as they did a year ago, and that would run until March. That would allow time for both the new administration and Congress to start planning before passing the annual spending bill. Now, for farmers, the farm bill is still out there with no definitive rally cry demanded that Congress complete the bill right now. Senator John Bozeman from Arkansas is expected to be the chairman of the Senate Ag Committee next year. He said that getting the farm bill done is top priority, but time will press lawmakers during the lame duck session. Senator Debbie Stabenow of Michigan is the retiring committee chair and has not yet weighed in on the possibilities since the election. Stay tuned. We'll be back to take a look at your markets after this. Whether you're in the fields or on the farm, creating a safer work environment has never been easier. BWC's safety consulting services are included with your policy premiums and offer training and education for everyone in your farming operation. It's always the right time to make safety a priority. Visit bwc.ohio.gov or call 1-800-644-6292. The Ohio Bureau of Workers' Compensation, here to help you work safely. It's time now for your morning Louis Dreyfus Grain Analysis, brought to you by the Ohio Soybean Council and your soybean checkoff. Let's check in with Ryan Martin. Grain markets working lower on a Tuesday. A little bit of a disappointing trade, honestly, overall, as we take a look at the uh, yesterday numbers. Honestly, the markets weren't lower everywhere. The ags were down, but we actually saw a little bit of support on outside markets. So it was kind of a counter macro move here. Biggest losers for Tuesday, wheat down double digits, beans down double digits. Corn was only down a penny to about three cents overall. As we take a look at the numbers, strong soy oil liquidation was underway through the day yesterday. A sharp fall off in palm oil fob offers, while wheat declined on softening world fob offers with additional rain coming into the uh, Central Plains, particularly looking at eastern Colorado, Oklahoma, Nebraska, and Kansas. The corn pulled back on the assumption that Mexico is probably done with its aggressive corn pricing due to the fear of uh, tariffs coming under the Trump administration and likely retaliation of Mexico against U.S. ag imports. Mexico is the largest U.S. corn importer. China is the largest bean importer. Tariffs will become a worry for the Board of Trade ahead of the January 20th inauguration day. Overall bearish field of the market all day yesterday. Post-harvest seasonal high is forming. Cash sources indicate that China purchased about 500,000 metric tons of Australian wheat earlier this week. No surprise there that they didn't come to the U.S., but still, seeing it in print was a little bit of a problem. USDA did confirm that 110,500 metric tons of corn was sold to Mexico. At least 50% of the U.S. corn to unknown destination is probably also to Mexico. That would raise the Mexico total purchases to about 16 million metric tons, an estimated 77% of the USDA annual import forecast for that nation. That's why we think we might be getting almost done with Mexico's purchases ahead of the upcoming likely tariffs. I'm Ryan Martin. Thanks, Ryan. Let's take a look at how the markets closed brought to us by Seed Consultants. Simply better performance online at SeedConsultants.com. December corn closed down one and a half cents and March corn was down two and a half. 
January soybeans closed down 11 and three quarters cents, while March soybeans were down 12 and three quarters. And December Kansas City wheat closed down 13 cents, while December Chicago wheat was down 13 and a quarter, and December Minneapolis wheat was down 14 and a quarter cent. In the overnight trade, the trend continues much like it did yesterday. December corn is down a penny at $4.27 and one half cent, with March corn down a half a penny at 4.39 and three quarters. November soybeans are unchanged at $10.3 three and one half cent, with January beans down a penny at ten dollars nine and one half cent and wheat for December trading down five and three quarters at five dollars forty six and one half cent the July 25 new crop down three and three quarter cents five dollars eighty one cents livestock numbers all closed higher thanks for joining us I'm Dusty Sonnenberg and you're listening to the Ohio Agnet